Shalom, all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, double honors to the elder, the elders of Great Millstone, who are the apostles of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Uh, salutations, Shalom to the sincere Akim out there, you know, the laborers, you know. And uh, basically, I'm making this video for the, uh, the brothers, you know, who may not have the uh, proper understanding of the Passover or you know, you may not understand what the, the significance of the Passover is. And uh, as we know, we're coming up on it March 4th, you know, uh, which is it's a serious time, okay, because as the title says, this is a, uh, it's a uh, deliverance uh, through death, all right? Now, again, this is for the uh, brothers that may not have the proper understanding of it or you're new to, to, to the understanding of, of uh what the Passover is, you know, and hopefully edify brothers who do have that understanding of what the Passover is, all right? And as you've seen prior, as the video started, we had the uh, shedding of a snake, or also known as malting, as you see before you, you know. I'm going to go over this real quick, you know, as the scripture said, we're supposed to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, you know. It says in biology, malting or malting, also known as sloughing, shedding of some species, ecdysis, is the manner in which an animal routinely casts off a part of its body, often but not always an outer layer or covering, either at specific times of the, of the year or at specific points in its, in its life cycle. Now we know, being Hebrew Israelites, that the Passover comes on the, uh, the first month on the 14th day typically and um uh, 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 when the year goes as, as the year goes around all right and uh seven days you're supposed to eat unleavened bread as the scriptures say it all right so this is the time of year for us you know for for, uh, for our shedding all right and I'm gonna get into uh, get into the details of that as well now it says we're well, at specific points in its life cycle which through the spirit we supposed to be always doing shedding. You know, scripture said a little leaven, leaven the whole lump, right? And it says uh molting can involve shedding the epidermis, which means skin, pillage, hair, feathers, fur, wool, just like in the season of a, a bear or a season of a cat, they shed skin, all right, or the external layer, hence, like the snake does, or the serpent. In some species, other body parts may be shed, for example, wings and some insects or the entire exoskeleton in arthropods. Now, I'm going to scroll down. Scroll down. We have the species and we have the timing and what is known as the notes of the species and the timing of the shedding. Now, going down, we're going to focus on the snake or the serpent. And it says... They shed the skin, all right. Regularly, regular, regular, regularly, salakia. When old skin is outgrown, now we could take that in the significance of us being Hebrew Israelites and the knowledge of the truth. We're constantly shedding skin, man. Constantly shedding skin, and more specifically in the time of the Passover. Okay, and, and I'm gonna get to a part where in the ceremony, there's a specific time when, you know. You can go into it and specifically ask the Lord for that for that blessing, all right? And uh, continuing, it says it's known as molting. It says snakes rub against rough surfaces to assist removal of their shed skin, all right? So as the hard times come, you know, in, 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 the, uh, uh, in the knowledge of the truth, we're constantly shedding skin like the snake or the serpent does, all right? Now... What I want to get into, I want to get into Exodus, the 12th chapter, all right, which is a uh, 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 ceremony of uh, the Passover, you know, and it's the pre, uh, the pre-setting of what happens, you know, uh, uh, not not the pre-setting, 
this priest setting it's basically the script of what was the, what was to happen when the Lord brought death upon the children of Egypt all right because Egypt was giving us hell and we were in uh, bondage in the land of Egypt all right and the Most High wanted to show his significance through his people all right and I must read uh, Exodus chapter 12 verse 11 first it says and thus shall you eat it speaking of uh, the, uh, the lamb the Passover lamb and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste it is the Lord's Passover and the reason I'm bringing this scripture out first is because to show you the significance in the uh, in the uh, um, sincerity or the seriousness I should say in which the Passover represents I'm gonna read it again it says and thus shall you eat with your loins girded your shoes on your feet all right because typically when you go down you sit down to eat a regular dinner or a regular meal your shoes is off your feet you're in a comfortable state you know you're not you're not thinking too tough it's a, it's a time of like you know relaxation so to speak you know typically eating is a time of rejoicing all right in this case the eating is, is uh, the time of eating is to show the significance you know of the death that was all around about us right verse 12 for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am Yahweh okay this is the most high showing his significance showing he's the supreme God of heaven and earth man over all the gods of earth all right I'm gonna scroll down you know try to make this brief you know get to the point get to the main points this uh verse 26 I want to get to first and it says you know as as it is written and it shall come to pass when your children say unto you you know because we have newer brothers coming into this uh, uh the Passover you know and they want to know what's the significance behind it and it says and it shall come to pass when your children shall, shall say unto you what mean ye by this service like what's the significance behind the service that ye shall say is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of, it, of, of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered the, our, our houses and the people bowed the head and worship all right and that's the significance of it it's the sacrifice that's what the lamb that's the purpose of that 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 lamb is the sacrifice all right because what what takes place in a sacrifice Death is death for a better cause. Death, death for life, in all actuality, because the purpose of a sacrifice in the ancient world, if it was to sin, you know, is basically is it was the sacrifice for your life. All right, continuing on, uh, I'm gonna jump down, verse forty-two, and it says. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord Yahweh for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is the, that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And again, hitting on the point, it says, it says to be much observed unto the Lord. Man, this is a, this is the significance of the day of the Lord when the Lord is doing a lot of sh uh, shedding, man. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna transition because this is ancient Egypt we're dealing with. We're gonna transition this and uh, relate it to now. All right, you know what? I'm not even gonna jump that far up. We're gonna translate it and transition it to the period of when the Lord was on the scene, Yahweh shot. All right, continuing. It's a lot of it. Continuing, I'm gonna jump to uh, chapter 13. Chapter 13 verse 14 and it says and it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come meaning now saying what is this thou shalt say unto him by strength of the hand of the Lord brought us out of out from Egypt from the house of bondage yeah because we were in slavery during the time of the Egyptians just like now we're in a spiritual Egypt now we're, we're in bondage all right it says and it came to pass 
verse 15, when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that Yahweh slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt with the firstborn of men and the firstborn of beasts. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the matrix being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And the word redeem, we know, means to buy back. And again, we're in the spiritual Egypt now, but we're going to need redemption again. How are we going to get that redemption? Through the blood of Yahweh Shah. All right, that's only for the elect. Only the elect is coming out of uh, out of Israel, you know, I, I mean, Salakia, out of America, all right, <laughs> Salakia, all right, now, what I want to do is, like I said, I want to transition to, uh, to uh, we're going to jump up about 2,000 years to uh, Matthew, let me not get, I want to get something real quick, give me one second, this is uh, Matthew chapter 26, and uh, uh, we start at 18. And he said, this is Yahweh Shah speaking to the disciples. Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, the master saith, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And in verse 19, and the disciples did as Yahweh Shah appointed them and they made ready the Passover. So now this is the time of the Passover when Yahweh Shah was on the scene, you know, and they're going to keep the ceremony. This time the ceremony had a bigger significance. Why? Because Yahweh Shai knew he was going to be delivered unto the Romans through uh, Judas Iscariot. All right. And that, and if brothers, you know, you're not um, too keen on what this chapter is all about, I advise brothers to go read it. You know, look into it, especially before the Passover, so you get your mind ready for the time that's to come. All right. I'm gonna jump down to verse 26. And as they were eating, Yahweh Shai took bread and blessed it and break it. All right. This is what, you know, what the church calls uh, communion. All right. How they take uh, 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 the Catholic church, they take that little piece of plastic bread and they bite it and they eat it and they talk. And this, with their, this is the ceremony that they're reciting. All right. Which also is the ceremony of the Passover, showing that the ones that are supposed to keep the communion are Israelites really the elect of Israel, because the word communion means common union, or uh, with one, under one, all right? And it says, as they were eating, Yahweh Shai took bread and blessed it, and break it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take it, this is my body, all right? And he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood, the New Testament, which is shed for the many, for many, for the remissions of sins. And this is shed for the elect. All right. I'm going to get something right quick. This wasn't on the schedule, but the spirit hit me. This is, uh, give me one second. You know what? This is what I'll do. Salak, so give me one second. Go here. Um, go to Hebrews. You know, just to be, there you go. That's the spirit is already there through the spirit. This is one of my favorite chapters, man, because it shows the significance of uh, the past coming into the future. How the old ceremonies transition to the new to the ceremonies that we the old ceremonies transition to the to the new ceremonies that we keep now nowadays. You know, because we can't keep the past over a hundred percent. All right. So this is our uh, Hebrews, I believe it's yep, nine and sixteen. For where a testament is, there must also a necessity be, be death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, is of no strength at while the testator live. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. All right. And then, you know, going, you know, this is a very good chapter. I love this chapter. Again, it uh, uh, reiterates the. The, the historical ceremonies and uh, uh, into the significance of what it means now on a spiritual note, all right? And, and it, it goes in, it says, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool, hyssop, and sprinkled the, both the book and 
all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which the Most High hath enjoyed unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled the blood with the tabernacle and all the vessels of, of the ministry. You know, and you know, it was again going into the, the, the old ceremony of, of the Passover and what Moses did on, on the doors, on the, uh, the two doorposts of all the houses of the children of Israel. And almost all things by the law purge with blood and with without shedding of blood is no remission okay that's why this is this this shedding now you know the spiritual shedding now is so significant because it's the shedding the, the remembrance of the shedding that we're remembering is the, the shedding of blood more so than the, the the shedding of Yahweh Shai man all right uh uh tch. I gotta read this. It says, It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifice than these. Okay, because it's a spiritual sacrifice. Now, for Yahweh Shai is not entered into holy places made with hands, which are figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of the Most High for us. Because again, in the ancient world, when you were to um, make that sacrifice, you know, when you was to make that sacrifice, it, it had to be uh, 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 for your sins. You know, and now you how shy is that sacrifice for our sins? All right. It says, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest enter into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suf suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice himself. And as appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Yahweh Shai was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. All right, now let me go back. Matthew 26, and this is where he goes into the ceremony and, and the significance of that. He's saying in a, a parabolic form of what we just read. And he says, Matthew 26, 26, And as they were eating, Yahweh Shai took the bread and said, Bless it and break it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. Now when the Christian church goes into this, they're right, but the only thing they're wrong on is that this is only for the elect of the children of Israel, man. All right, that body that Yahweh Shai, that 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 uh, that body that he offered up, that sacrifice, that lamb, as you read uh, um, Exodus twelve and five, which I'm gonna put up in post production, it said that you had to get a male, uh, whether it be sheep or goat, without blemish, and that's what Yahweh Shai was. Yahweh Shai was that male or goat without blemish. You know, that, that, that sheep or that goat without blemish, that lamb without blemish. Verse 27, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye, ye all of it, all right? For this is my blood, the New Testament. Again, we just read what the Testament was, all right? The blood, the shed, the bloodshed of Yahweh Shai, man, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Because Yahweh Shai mind was he was he was beyond the, he was so far ahead of the disciples that he had to break it down to him like yo look man I'm really talking about my blood when we really when we really have the time to indulge in drinking wine because the scriptures say wine cheer up the, cheer up, cheer up the, uh, the hearts of men. All right, but he's saying, "Look, this wine that we're drinking, this vine, this cup, I'm not. I, we're not going to drink it to be merry. We drink. We're going to do that later on. All right, and that was pretty much the point on that. All right, now what what I want to do is, you know, because we went to the significance of the time of Yahweh Shai and what the significance of the Passover was at that time. All right, now what I'm going to do is we're going to fast forward into the prophecies." Right, we're gonna get this through the spirit 360, man. You know, you know, we started off in the history, what happened, we moved on 
to you know pretty much what what happened in with the time of Yahweh Shai, which is the significance of now. All right, now we're gonna move on to the future. All right, but give me one second. Something it just slipped my mind. Oh yeah, that's what I want to get. We're gonna get is uh, Jeremiah Salakia, Jeremiah sixteen. All right, Jeremiah chapter sixteen. I'm gonna start at verse fourteen because again. This is this is spiritual Egypt as you read in Revelations 11 and 7. Therefore, behold, days come, saith the Lord, that it shall be no more said. The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of the children of Israel from the land of the north. The land of the north represents Babylon. Alright? But everybody doesn't remember ancient, the deliverance of ancient Egypt. I mean ancient Israel from ancient babylon okay so it's talking about modern day babylon and from the lands whether he had driven them i will bring them again into their land that i gave unto their fathers all right and this is talking about straight up and down the elect of the children of israel all right and i believe you can read that uh uh uh, uh yeah sirach 46 46 and 1 all right well, well i'm gonna put that up in post-production how joshua the son of none he delivered the elect the most high elect until until in the land of of the children of canaan which is known today as the land of israel all right now fast forwarding we're talking about the time to come again was read here that we're going to be delivered out the, the uh the out of uh, the land of the north which is babylon the great aka spiritual egypt as well now Revelation chapter 7, I'm going to start at verse 1. And after these, I saw the four angels stand on the four corners of the earth, beholding, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Well, this is, you know, talking about the destruction of America, a.k.a. Babylon, the great, a.k.a. spiritual Egypt. And I saw another angel setting from the head, from Salaki, from the east, having the seal, seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and sea, saying, okay, because just like in the ancient world, those that had the seal, which was the spirit, which was the blood of the of the uh, of the lamb in the time of Egypt, the, the Passover the Passover didn't touch those those uh those 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 homes with death. All right. And just like the time to come when when the, the next when we're gonna be delivered out of this Egypt, out of you know, this is what the scripture says, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. All right, because that's the knowledge. The knowledge when Yahweh Shah was talking about drinking the blood, drinking that vine, drinking that wine, it was talking about being sealed with the knowledge. Just like Ezekiel 9 and 4 says. It says, um, go, go, go ye, in the, uh, Mr. Israel, and seal, and seal a mark upon the men that are, uh, that are signing and crying for the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. You know what? Through the Spirit, I'm going to just have to get it because it's a significant part that, that we got to get, you know, uh. You gotta get because in Ezekiel 9 to 4, there's a specific word in there. Salaki. Ezekiel 9 to 4. There's a specific word in there that we want to get. Salaki. This is in uh, Ezekiel 9 and 4, okay? Because when in the ancient world, when in, in, in ancient Egypt, you had to have that. You had to be exempt from judgment, man. You had to have that 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 blood on your post to be exempt from the judgment. Now, in the time that we live in, we're drinking the blood and the significance. We're drinking the wine and the significance of Yahweh Shai's blood, which is the covering for our sins. That's why he said you can't have a testament. The testament now, which is the bloodshed, is for the remissions of sins. And it says, and the and the Lord said 
unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh, sigh and cry for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, which is a popular scripture in Israel. Now we're going to go into that word mark. All right, we're going to see what that word mark is. Now it says a desire, a mark, you know, this is going off. It says mark, a sign of exemption from judgment, which this word here is fawa in the Hebrew. Fawa, this is a fa and a wa, which means to be exempt from judgment. Okay, why Why are you going to be exempt from judgment? All right, why? From, from what judgment? Okay. That's what you should be asking yourself, you know. And it says here, let me ask this out. And it says, and the others, he said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite, just like ancient Egypt, just like what's going to happen here in America. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, bondmaids and little children and women. This time ain't going to be no... You know, if you ain't got that blood, if you ain't got the proper doctrine, if you're not sealed with that mark, then you're going to be put to death, man. You know, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, who's exempt from judgment, who has that knowledge, who has that blood, that covering, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they, then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. All right. So that's just what it is, man. All right. Now, going back to Revelation chapter 7, it says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants with that, ex that, that, uh, that mark of being exempt from judgment. And it says, of our power in their foreheads, meaning the 100% truth, the knowledge thereof. Man. All right. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Revelation chapter 9. We're going to go straight to the point. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 9, verse 14. It says, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels. No, 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 no. My bad, I can. Here we go. Revelation 9 and 4. And it was commanded them that would that should not hurt the grass on the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of the most high in their foreheads. And again, going with that, with that, what is that seal ultimately? Is that the hundred percent knowledge, that hundred percent truth, which is the which represents the blood of Yahweh Shah, why he died, so we can get that hundred percent knowledge, man. You know? And uh pretty much that that's the significance of the Passover, man. You know, it's the uh, uh the life through death, man. The death, the death that we acknowledge now is through Yahweh Shah. You know, that's ultimately what the Passover is about. It's so through the, the, the death of Yahweh Shah, so that we will be able to be, to be delivered from, from death. All right? So we be able to get life eternally. All right? With that, we'll say all praise to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, double honor to the elders of Great Millstone, who are the apostles of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. Shalom, salutations to the sincere Akim out there. Wa Akwa or, or the sisters, you know, that are helping the men of the Lord. All right. Uh, to the laborers out there, okay? Shalom.